In his first interview with the press since he was ordered to pay $49.3 million in damages to the families of Sandy Hook victims who he defamed, Alex Jones sat down for an interview with Andrew Callahan of Channel 5 News. And unlike the interview that he had with Glenn Greenwald, Andrew Callahan actually asked him real questions. And as a result, Alex Jones lost his mind. Take a look. Do you feel responsible for what happened to the Sandy Hook families? Yes, I killed the children. But beyond that... I no, mean, I mean, I went in that school... I pulled a gun out and I shot every one of them myself. I mean, I, I'm, 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 I'm guilty. It's true. No, but I mean, no, no. Let's just. Do I feel responsible that someone on on played shoot 'em up video games on a bunch of drugs, went and killed a bunch of kids, and then the internet questioned it and I covered that? No, I don't feel responsible, and I don't apologize anymore. I'm done. Mm -hmm. I don't apologize. I killed the kids. Was there a defendant? I, no, I killed them. I killed him. You didn't kill him. No, I did. No, you didn't. No, everybody said no. No, I killed him. I killed him. I already admit it. I did it. I killed him. I'm the bad guy. I'm the devil. Get rid of the First Amendment. We move on to other topics. I don't think you. I killed him. First Amendment killed him. Second, get rid of the Second Amendment. Get rid of the First Amendment. They're bad. They killed the kids too. George Washington killed him. Jesus killed him. The whole, we should rename the whole planet Sandy Hook. Everything, there should be holidays. We should bow five times a day to, to New Haven, Connecticut for the kids that died. Every American's to blame. Every gun owner's to blame. I'm to blame. We are all guilty to Bloomberg and Soros. Turn our guns in, turn our guns in. I know, I did it, I killed them. I killed them, I killed them. I, I know, I killed them. So I'm done talking about it. I killed them. Okay, go ahead. I mean, I would say that that's unbelievable just because generally speaking, you don't really see most functioning adults behave in that way, but it's Alex Jones, so it's totally predictable. But like the question that Andrew asked was completely reasonable. Do you feel responsible for what happened to the Sandy Hook families? Now, he's very clearly asking, do you feel responsible for the harassment that they received after you lied about them, claimed that that was a false flag? and they were paid actors and their children weren't really dead. Like, do you feel responsible for what your viewers did in harassing them and terrorizing them? But of course he conflates that with the kids dying itself saying, oh yeah, I did it. Uh, I killed the children. That's not what he's asking. And you know that that's not what he's asking because later on he says, do I feel responsible that someone else played shoot 'em up video games, of course, blaming video games, uh, did a bunch of drugs, went and killed a bunch of kids, and then the internet questioned it, and then I covered that? No, I don't feel responsible. So he knows the question that Andrew was asking. He just chose to throw a little bit of a temper tantrum, but he then answered the question, and his answer was, no, I don't feel responsible that my viewers harassed this individual after I used my massive platform to spread lies about this family, these mul multiple families. It's just... This is Alex Jones for you. He will never take responsibility. Never. He is a petulant child. And even when he's held accountable, he is incapable of learning from his actions. It's just, it's embarrassing. And the worst part about this is he tried to portray himself as the victim just because Andrew asked that question automatically. Oh, no, you're basically blaming me for the deaths of these children. First of all, he's not doing that. But... You're pretending to be the victim because of a fucking question. Imagine what you put these families through. The Posner family, for example, they had to move seven different times because your viewers, after you defamed these families, they kept finding them, kept harassing the Posner family. Now, because he wants to portray himself as the victim, let me just remind everyone what Alex Jones did to these families after they suffered one of the most tragic things that parents can go through. As the Associated Press reports, Jones, who has portrayed the lawsuit as an attack on his First Amendment rights, conceded during the trial that the attack was 100% real and that he was wrong to have lied about it. But Heslin and Lewis told jurors that an apology won't suffice and has called on them to make Jones pay for the years of suffering he has put them and others Sandy Hook families through. The parents told jurors about how they've endured a decade of trauma inflicted first by the murder of their son and what followed, gunshots fired at a home, online and phone threats, and harassment on the street by strangers. They said the threats and harassment were all fueled by Jones and his conspiracy theory spread to his followers via his website Infowars. A forensic psychiatrist testified that the parents suffer from complex post-traumatic stress disorder inflicted by ongoing trauma similar to what might be 
experienced by a soldier at war or a child abuse victim. But no, 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 it's Alex Jones who's the real victim, not these families who his viewers harassed after he defamed them. I mean, imagine the anguish and mental trauma that you deal with losing a child, only to then develop PTSD because of the harassment that you receive after being accused that you were faking the death of your child. It's just what he did is so disgusting and gross. You really you can't calculate it like, like he's ordered to pay forty nine point three million. But that can never make up the damage that he caused to these families. It's truly disgusting. Now, as you're going to see here, Andrew Callahan is going to ask him about the lawsuit. And that's when he calls it quits. He storms out of the interview and then. A producer, I'm assuming, for Alex Jones um, kind of scolds him because of the dumb shit that he said. Just just take a look. Can we talk about the trial at all? There's nothing to talk about. Let me tell you, I don't know if I can do this interview right now. <laughs> you liking it? I don't think you should keep doing that. <laughs> what? Dude, I murdered those children. I did. I killed him myself. Still not a funny thing to say. I get the point, but it's just like, fuck, man. Fuck it. I don't give a fuck, dude. Right. I'm far beyond giving a fuck right now. I understand. What do you even say to that? What do you even say to that? This is a child who we're dealing with here. I mean, he can't have a normal sit-down interview unless he's getting softballs thrown at him, as Glenn Greenwald did. Then he'll stay for the interview. But if you're going to actually ask him real questions, then he can't take the heat. So he storms off. Now, the full interview is 20 minutes. And if you want to watch it, I'll link you to the Patreon of Channel 5. I'm not sure if they're going to uh, release this eventually, unlock it. But either way, if you want to watch the full thing, I'll link to that down below. It's their Patreon page. And they're a great channel. So, you know, if you support them, that's a great decision. Um, but just, like, imagine being asked a question and storming off. Andrew Callahan, I've seen his interviews before, and he's really clever. He'll ask a really open-ended question and let the interviewee kind of just talk and talk and talk. And then once he sees an opportunity, he'll push back or ask more questions, which kind of leads to them revealing their insidious, idiotic views. And it's a really interesting way that he kind of disarms them and gets them to say terrible things. So it's good, hard-hitting interviews that Andrew Callahan does. But like even just starting off simple, letting Alex Jones answer in an open-ended way, hey, can we talk about the interview? He can't take it. It's just... What do you say? What do you say? Um, now, the reason why Alex Jones is so irritable is because he's in deep shit. Okay, so I want to share an interview that aired on TYT just a couple of days after the lawsuit took place last month with the attorney for the Sandy Hook families, Mark Bankston. And he's going to explain specifically why Alex Jones is very touchy about this particular subject when it comes to the lawsuit. So sure. uh, you had an incredible economist on the stand. I thought his testimony was excellent. He got into the nitty gritty of the finances behind Alex Jones and all of his multiple LLCs. Uh, we learned through that that Alex Jones had withdrawn um, about $62 million uh, for himself in 2021. Uh, and there's questions about where that money went. It seems like he's trying to hide some of his assets. And you had said something that I'm, I'm trying to understand a little better. You had mentioned that if he does go through with bankruptcy, it could actually make the compensatory damages cap moot. And I want to understand how that works. Sure. And I don't think moot is quite the right word. So let me walk this through this because a lot of people are asking about this too. In Texas, there is a $750,000 cap per cause of action and defendant for punitive damages added on to a, a verdict for mental anguish. In this case, there are three causes of action. And there are two defendants per each cause of action. So that adds up to an additional $4.5 million that can be put on this cap. Well, along with the million and a half sanctions that was already awarded to these plaintiffs, we're talking just about $10 million judgment that they would seek if the cap is applied. Now, clearly, we can appeal that cap. And there may have been never a better case to do that under than this case right here to challenge it on due process grounds. But instead of spending years in the appellate court, what most likely is going to happen is all of these claims are gonna be kicked into this bankruptcy court and they're gonna to have to be valued there. And then because the plaintiff has the ability to maybe appeal that and potentially win, 
that contingency will need to be factored in, baked into the valuation of the case in the bankruptcy court. And as I said, you're gonna be seeing multiple plaintiffs being bringing these suits. You've got the Lafferty plaintiffs coming in, that's nine of them there. Two more of my clients are gonna be bringing another suit after that. Also, there's a young man who was misidentified as the Parkland shooter. He has a claim that I have him representing against Jones. So when all of these plaintiffs finally end up in the bankruptcy court, they're just gonna be carving up the pie. And, and I think from what we've seen, um, there's a good chance that there's not gonna be enough for everybody's verdict, that everybody's gonna have to prorate these out anyway. Um, but what it's gonna be is the end of Infowars when that happens. Interestingly enough, most defendants would use that bankruptcy escape hatch as some sort of protection over themselves. In this case, I think I predict it's gonna go the exact opposite. Mr. Jones is gonna be subjected to a level of financial scrutiny over his transactions that he has never seen before. And considering what we know has gone down in that courtroom and their ability to tell the truth on the stand there, as well as we know that we now have his text messages, I don't think any of that's gonna go very well, particularly once federal receivers are involved. And that right there is why this is such a soft spot for Alex Jones. He may actually lose it all, lose Infowars because of his own stupidity. He prioritized, you know, clicks and views and conspiracy theories over people's lives. Didn't even think about the real world impact that his lies had on families. And now he's paying the consequences. It's not the families who are making him the victim because they're choosing to sue after he defamed them. It's him for doing what he did to them. I mean, early on in life, most of us learn that actions have consequences. And some people, Alex Jones, Donald Trump, a number of folks, they just, they never actually have to deal with the ramifications of their bad actions, deal with the bad things that they do to people. But he's having to deal with that. He's having to lie in the bed that he made for himself. And this is what that's causing him to be, a complete loon even more so than usual who can't even do a simple interview answer basic questions storming off of interviews melting down it's just it's embarrassing but i mean i'm glad that this is how he's coping because you can tell he's not having a fun time and i just want him to experience even a fraction of what he put the families of sandy hook through and i said this before i'll say it again i hope that he loses everything i hope that he loses infowars because this is an individual who is bad him having that big of a platform is objectively bad for the united states and for the world so if he loses infowars that is a net good for humanity so i hope that everyone else who is bringing lawsuits forward is successful and yeah i hope that he just fades into obscurity because that will be better off for everyone and based on you know how stressed out he is because of this lawsuit it seems like it'd be better for him as well so go away alex jones we don't need you you offer nothing but conspiracy theories and pain and just fuck off forever like what a piece of shit like watching him storm out during that interview like i just thought to myself the audacity of this motherfucker who spent so much time defaming these families and now when he just faces a little bit of scrutiny he can't take it what a fucking piece of shit